Finally, at the end, I will present some results from uh, structural monitoring of Arch Dam in Montenegro. And some pra uh, this will be practical example with real measurements of real structure. And uh, the team that was working on evaluation of stability of the dam was from Montenegro, uh, professors from Montenegro, they are listed here, only me from Macedonia. I was responsible only for the thermal analysis of the structure, but uh, these results will be presented uh, on next workshops together with the acceleration measurements that were conducted by the Institute for Earthquake Engineering from Skopje, Macedonia. And this was a bilateral team in a way working on uh, monitoring of the structure. Indeed, the, moni indeed the monitoring started uh, a long time ago uh, in the moment where after the first filling of the dam. It was in 1976 when the dam was finished, but uh, later uh, on the basis of the uh, measurements, on the basis of the results, uh, um, new softwares were tried to evaluate the stability and the usability of the structure because in the time when the structure, the dam was constructed and designed indeed, uh, the softwares, the uh, models, computer models were not so uh, um, practical as today. They didn't take into account the uh, uh, correlation and the interaction between the structure, the foundation, the surrounding uh, rock mass. So you will see that some of the results in, uh, obtained from that time maybe might be better today if we take all these results for calibration, the new computational model. First, why we need to monitor uh, this type of structures because they have a uh, high risk and uh, according to national and international uh, legislation, we need to have permanent technical um, monitoring uh, of these type of structures and the International Committee of Large Dams defines the criteria for these monitorings. Uh, we do it uh, only with one purpose, to evaluate the safety and stability of the structure and normally the permeability of the structure. Uh, in this uh, example, I will present the technical monitoring, uh, the results for uh, measurements of deformations and movements. And all these uh, measurements will be um, with equipment, with devices that are mechanical devices, old methods, but very, um, um, we, we can say um, safe on the, uh, the side of safety and they gave very good results. Uh, at the moment, uh, the measurements are in, uh, were done in uh, maybe 1,000 points of the structure. And most of the devices were mechanical. They are still working and they are still giving good results. And the electrical devices, half of them are not in use anymore. They are destroyed. So um, we can say that the old type of uh, analysis uh, measurements were quite uh, reliable and uh, we have very, very good results for the dam. Indeed, uh, the measurements were physical quantities that uh, could be analyzed and uh, interpreted from the aspect of stress-strain condition of the structure, uh, not only for the structure, but for the surrounding um, rock mass and the foundation. All measurements were done during the construction, after the initial filling, and uh, during the operational stage of the dam. Uh, the technical monitoring was set of activities it means development of monitoring program, installation of equipment for monitoring, regular registration of measurements, evaluation of uh, registered values in order to define stress strain state of the dam, and finally, dam safety evaluation. And um, now, on the basis of the structural analysis, uh, the detailed uh, design and the measurements uh, we can decide is, if the structure is safe enough and we can continue with the uh, exploitation or this structure needs some repair or some other activities. But as a first stage of all these measurements and analysis, we need to have uh, the limit values 
to construct the envelopes uh, in which uh, range all these measurements have to be uh, if we want to say that the structure is safe. Uh, these first uh, values were defined with the old computer programs that didn't take under consideration the interaction between the structure and the surrounding media. But uh, we can see that the results of measure measurements are again quite in a good range. This structure in the past was treated as one of the highest dams in the world, but now it's not so because 220 meters now we have much higher uh, concrete uh, arch dams. Uh, the arch length at the crown was 268 meters. At the river bend, it was only 40 meters. The crown thickness was 4.5 uh, uh, meters. In the base, it was 45. Uh, it was constructed with 18 cantilevers and have five revision galleries. And the level of the dam, uh, measured from the uh, sea level was and is still 678 meters. On this slide, we have um, points uh, where um, the horizontal displacements are measured by using geodetic monitoring methods. And uh, these points are for radial and for transversal, the, uh, for uh, movements in radial and transversal directions on the downstream side. On this slide, we have uh, the position of the micro trigonometric network for measuring uh, the horizontal displacements. And on this slide, we have uh, the points where we have uh, marks for uh, differential leveling survey for vertical displacements of the crown of the dam. Another geometric, uh, geodetic monitoring that was done, it was tilt meter for measuring the vertical uh, changes, changes in the vertical uh, rotation of the cantilevers. Uh, it was done uh, specially for three uh, cantilevers, five, nine, and 14. Nine is the, in the middle uh, of the dam and is the most uh, representative for the behavior of the whole dam. The mechanical and telemetric monitoring includes lateral def uh, deformations, dilatation of radial joints, dam inclination, the tilt, rock deformation, ground pressure, uplift or on the base of uh, the structure, pore pressure, and concrete temperature. Lateral deformations, uh, they are measured with direct and invert uh, pendulums and uh, these results are very reliable. It, we will see later that the results uh, in comparison with the results obtained by the geodetical uh, survey are very close and match very well. And direct pendulums were placed on cantilevers 5, 9, and 40, but invert pendulum was uh, based 30 meters uh, lower than uh, the base joint because on that depth, we, uh, in that time, they, they guessed that uh, the stresses and deformations are negligible. I told that uh, if we compare the results obtained by this pendulum and uh, geodetical survey, we have very good uh, matching of the results. And we will see later on the diagrams. Uh, the dilatation of radial joints it was followed by uh, 45 deformators placed on five levels and in the revision galleries and the cantilever joints. The water level and the concrete temperature have dominant influence on the dilatation of these joints. And the effect of uh, the extreme effect we have in autumn and in spring uh, when we have um, uh, maximal decrease of the water level and the uh, cooling pass of the concrete. Uh, the dam inclination was defined with 35 inclinometers placed in six levels. The rock deformation was defined with rock extensometers that were set at three levels and with depthometers set 
again at three levels. After that, hydrological monitoring was done. Groundwater level was measured with uh, 53 piezometers. Hydrological and meteorological monitoring uh, was um, in connection with uh, accumulation level, air and water measure uh, temperature, drainage, participa uh, precipitation, and relative humidity of the air. And as I said before, seismic monitoring was done by uh, the Earthquake Institute in Skopje. And the results of the uh, accelerations will be present on some of uh, the next workshops. And uh, it is um, interesting to be said that seismic zone of this dam is seven, but it was treated as it was in a region with seismic action nine. Here we can see on this slide uh, the extreme, maximum, and minimum values for the di displacements that were calculated and uh, all uh, measured values were expected to be between these two lines to be between the envelope, inside the envelope and uh, these two diagrams are for the cantilever L9 in the middle, in the center of the arch dam and cantilever L5 here we have the water level uh, at the moment of initial filling, it lasted for one year, and according to the uh, water level and the, uh, the temperature of the air, uh, the measured values uh, of the movements at the level of the crown, 678 meters is the crown level, we have very good agreement with the uh, uh, extreme values for the movements we expected and the real one that were measured in that time. Only at the end of the uh, arch where we have connection with the surrounding rock because previously I said that the interaction between the rock and the structure in that time was not taken under consideration, we have differences, we have high movements that uh, these uh, lines uh, extreme lines show. But these results now are used for calibration, the new model that is used for uh, evaluation the stress strain situation of this structure. This is the program SAP, now it is used. And uh, with these results, calibration is very successful. Here we have that after a period of use, during the exploitation of the structure, in period between 78 and 91, we have a much higher values for the displacements. The reason for that is creep and shrinkage of the concrete. And this is for the period between 97 and 2004. But again, we are in the range of the extreme values. Uh, here we can see comparison of measured and limited displacements for the cantilever L9, the central one, uh, the first diagram is uh, in the moment of uh, initial filling in 1976 and the second diagram is the, for the period between 2001 and 2006. As I said, uh, measurements were done with rock extensometers for the movements of points in the surrounding rock mass and uh, at level 6.2 uh, we have the following results for the points uh, it was in the period of initial filling again all the movements are in the range of limit values but after a time we can see that these movements are coming close to the uh, extreme value the maximum, not the minimum but the maximum value the reason as I uh, told before are uh, the creep and shrinkage of concrete and, uh, but again, the structure is uh, still safe and can be used future, in a future for exploitation. Here we have results of the deflectometer and uh, for points that are presented on the uh, right part of the slide. Here we have the position of these deflectometers. And comparison of the results obtained by geodetic measurements tilt meter and pendulum and we can see that we have very good 
uh, agreement between the results at the beginning of the exploitation and later during the exploitation stages. This is for the 2002. We have very, very good agreement between the three types of measurements. Although all these measurements are with uh, traditional mechanical devices, still reliable results we have. And uh, with the defer, uh, defer methods, we define the openings in the joints of the dam for the different levels of water. Uh, here we have the water level and openings of the joints of different levels of the dam in the period of 95 till 2003. Again, the results are acceptable and all these results are used for evaluation and calibration, the new model that now we are using for evaluation, the stress-stress uh, situation of this structure. And as I said, all these results later will be used when we will uh, do the numerical analysis of um, um, seismic action of the structure. Uh, all of the conclusions I already told during my presentation that these uh, results are used for calibration of the project, of the new model, so if there are some questions I will try to answer, although this presentation is not totally mine, because the leader of the team was Professor um, Radek Popejovic, he is not present here today, but I was part of the team, so uh, quite in, I know quite enough about all these results, I may answer to the questions. Thank you.